Auditory injury is a significant problem for uh, service members and veterans. Hearing loss and tinnitus have been the uh, most prevalent service-connected disabilities for veterans. And since uh, these exposures are so common in the military, uh, we need to address them to the best of our ability. It's imperative that we focus on preventing hearing loss and tinnitus in our service members and veterans as we think about trying to maintain quality of life and for those that have served. My research has focused on tinnitus over the years. We were funded by the Department of Defense and the study has been active since 2013. We've collected data on over a thousand service members and veterans and the study is in good hands right now and we're hoping that it will continue for another 15 or 20 years, uh, which is really necessary to answer the original questions from the study. The project is ongoing. And one of our main aims is to understand the natural history of hearing and tinnitus over time as it relates to those military exposures. And because of this, we're collecting data every five years, in-person data every five years, on our service members and veterans. We've looked at the associations between tinnitus and functional status in our service members and veterans, and we found that people who have tinnitus do struggle more in their daily lives. It interrupts their sleep, it has an adverse effect on their mental health, their ability to concentrate and focus. We're surprised at the prevalence of tinnitus. The average age of our participants, uh, whether they're service members or veterans, is about 35 years old. And we are finding that the prevalence of tinnitus in our group of over a thousand participants is about 60% or so in the veteran population and about 40% or so in the uh, service member population. So that's a surprisingly high prevalence. We've also seen an association with self-reported hearing difficulty and PTSD in our service members and veterans. And so individuals who are blast exposed, who have complaints of hearing, um, we believe that part of that association is probably mitigated through uh, PTSD, probable PTSD. One thing I would like to see happen, especially in our veterans, is that if they present with blast exposure and self-report hearing difficulty, but actually have normal pure tone hearing thresholds, that we begin to screen for PTSD in our audiology clinics and think about integrative care and subsequent referral to mental health when it's needed and warranted. The greatest value of the study will be to, to keep it going and follow up on all of our participants for uh, years and years and years. Uh, that's going to answer some, some really important questions that can't be answered any other way.